Um, yeah, Coach Hire, um, just checking in on the secondary guys, uh, yeah. injuries and so um, forth you know, coming out that, yesterday. We'd be concerned about is is Casey. You know, he's the one that that again we don't have all the information, but that'd be the one that's uh, looking more long term. The rest of those guys, uh, as we continue to evaluate, uh, thankful be you know short term, but case case is the one that uh, we're concerned about. Okay. And, um, you know, just uh, getting ready for uh, uh, who, well, I guess Hall has been the guy that's been getting most uh, of his time, but are you, you know, how are you with your well, depth? you know, at, it just depends on, you know, the game plan, obviously still early in the week. Um, we know we obviously got a challenge with Cincinnati and, and their personnel, especially uh, you know, as much as they like to play in 11 personnel, and they've got really good wideouts and a, and a good, really good quarterback. So, uh, still early in the week there, put the plan together, but uh, we're confident in our guys. Guys stepped up and played really well. Uh, Darren did. Darren's had a good camp, and uh, his number was called yesterday and made a huge play on that deep ball to uh, Ayuk. Really good uh, patience and body control and up there making that play. Arthur, with how much Kyle played yesterday, how much of those snap counts were more him coming off of an injury versus game plan versus? A little both. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's what it was. What is, you know, the, there's been those questions about his production, and you've said over and over that he's done, he's been so valuable. Can you just maybe explain a little bit more what that he has done that has been so valuable that maybe me or, or most people would see, be able to see? Well, I mean, you can, you know, his, the effect he has on every play, you have to account for him. Uh, for last year, wouldn't necessarily, you know, ton of runs behind him. We're running right behind him a lot. Um, so it makes, again, it's you're not as obvious what you're trying to do. I think yeah, he draws a lot of attention. I mean, even the one that he got the call as penalty, he ran a great route. He still got out of that thing. Um, he has an impact on every play he's out there. You have to account for him. And it was uh, good to see him rewarded. Uh, I thought it was a really good play by Marcus on the touchdown to him. Um, understanding, you know, as he read through it and using what we were trying to set up to his advantage, and it was a really good route by Kyle, too. Where is his blocking gotten better? Because that was Everywhere. another point Everywhere. of emphasis for him this year. Everywhere. It's all over the tape. But that's, I mean, it's, it's run behind him in space. You know, we, we split him out. Uh, so, like all our guys, I think the tight end room as a, as a whole playing real well. You, yourself being a former tight ends coach, how much of that is just a guy, maybe you didn't have to block as much in college, going from year one to year two to something that is a tangible? Yeah. A lot of it depends on what style you want to play. I mean, if you just wanted to say, stay out there stationary and play in, in, in spread formations, it's probably a little bit easier of a learning curve. And you could probably pad the stats. You may not be in as many games. You can get a bunch of two minute stats when the game's out of reach and feel pretty good about it and say, oh, he caught 90 balls. But what was his impact on winning the game? I think that's what uh, we value about Kyle and the impact he has on us winning and uh, all the things we ask him to do. It, it, there's a lot. There's some we flex him out. There's times we put him in the core. Uh, we motion him. Um, it's a lot. And as, as and he's a very smart player and uh, still really, really young, too, in his career. Arthur, you quoted last week, and correct me if I'm wrong, saying uh, completion percentage and quarterback rating be damned. Uh, Marcus Mariota went out with 93% completion percentage, 144 right. quarterback rating. Play, played the game plan. The game plan was, you know, against that defense. Like I said, I mean, I don't, I don't care what his rating is at. You don't turn the ball over. You don't turn the ball over. You make the plays that are there, and he did that. In question form, is it easier to call a game when those numbers are better? Is it easier to manage a game when those numbers are better as opposed to when they're not? Again, it just depends on what the scheme and what you're trying to attack. Um, you know, if there's a game that we feel that you could take it, be a little uh, riskier, there's something there that you try to take take advantage of that they, they give you. But I think when you're playing a defense like the Niners, um, they don't give you a lot of opportunities for shots. And and part of it is because of the way they rush the quarterback. So you're not – if you're holding the ball for a long time, yeah, guys may be open. You may get that still shot or you may have the, uh, the analytics bro online or the, uh, the – the Twitter coach that, you know, puts a still shot. But, oh, you can't believe, look how open he was. It's like, hey, buddy, he had about a half a second to get that ball off. No offense, but uh, guy just blew up through the A-gap. He couldn't get the top of the drop. So, anyways, I digress. But um, 
And then that's what makes San Fran so, so good. And so yesterday I thought he played really clean, was efficient. Every game's going to be a different story. Uh, very happy. I think what you're seeing is progress. Stats be damned to use your term. Maybe I used it, maybe I didn't. Um, in all seriousness, like the flow of the game, he was in a rhythm. Certainly that would help. Yes. I mean, he got hit four for four in the first drop, so clearly he mm -hmm. something was different considering he only completed five passes in the entire game. Well, I think it started on the first first down. I mean, I mean, the first third down, the big play to OZ. I think, you know, sometimes it is. It's a little bit like that first shot goes in the basket. Uh, I'm not a good golf. I play like once a year, so I, I try to use a golf analogy, but I claim to watch more than I really know. But you see that putt go, then maybe it puts you in a, in a better headspace. Yeah, mentally. Uh, that, that is real. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, will we do another shameless plug? No. No. Uh, I mean, you know, you, have you ever done that before? In your, in your, in your no. Other Alon brought it up on Saturday. We were at the walkthrough. They said, can we go in there? And uh, so I ran it up the, the flagpole, yeah. I guess. And uh, they said, sure. And then, uh, and so the line, like I said, the game ended. We won, and they ran for over 100 yards. So we went in there and had a beer. Like yeah, we had to win, and we had to have over 100 yards. What I told them. <laughs> and I got it cleared, and, and it, it, you know, credit to them. It wasn't some uh, marketing ploy. It was it was led by them. It was organic, and I thought it was it was fun. I, I don't know if I'm going to get fined or not. I really don't care. <laughs> Maybe on that note, you know, aside from the culture that you want to build on the field in between the lines, you know, with what you want to do tactically in a game. Uh, how have you seen this team kind of the, the the culture that you want to instill grow in these first six weeks? Well, I think, you know, it's never perfect. Um, but I think we're, we played really well situationally. And, and that comes in every phase. I mean, the game's within the games, right, before the half. You know, get that touchdown for the half. Make them use their timeouts. You get in there and, yeah, they may get a couple yards, but be able to end there in, in the half, like, there's nine seconds to go, no timeouts. And so um, knowing that situation and not letting them out of bounds and if they're going to chunk it down if they completed it, the half's over. And then Isaiah went up and got the interception. Um, coming back and obviously being a two-score game and you're fourth and five, so to have a punter, Bradley Pinion's playing really well for us. I think Hodge and Mike Ford are doing a hell of a job at Gunner. And you go down and Pinion hit that. You know, we talk about changes, club selection, and he did. And be able to hit that, and Hodge was right there, reestablishes, gets the ball on the one. So then they hold the ball for eight minutes and come away with zero points. Yeah, I mean, like, sure, would you love to have gone back out there on offense and scored more? Maybe, you know, that's why the stats sometimes on, like, the total yards really don't matter defensively. Because whatever they got on that drive, and even the game was over, and a couple check downs, and, and great. So if they got over 100 something yards of offense right there with zero points, that's a huge win by us. And the way we were playing, and to make them eat that clock, and um, that's being in tune and, and, and knowing and staying disciplined in that situation. That was what I saw a lot of growth as, as a team. Do you see the results in terms of the wins that you've gotten so far this season as kind of being a, a proof of concept that is kind of allowing the players to, to coalesce even more and just kind of build that that confidence? Do the wins kind of help? Yeah, that? I mean, you need to be rewarded. I mean, you don't want to sit here and talk about moral victories. And, yeah, you need some results for sure to show that progress. I mean, you can see it, but it, you, know, you want to be rewarded by by those wins. and. Uh, and thankfully we are. I mean, not obviously where we want to be, and we know we have a huge game this Sunday, and it's a long journey. You know, it's like you see it every year. Some teams start 8-0, 10-0, and then it's like, you know, they're, by the end of the year, they're maybe they, they limp into the playoffs. You I mean, you want to be improving, hopefully playing our best ball come December and January. Is it too early to start using the word playoffs? I'm not going to give you the Jim Moore senior quote, no. Okay. But uh, <laughs> we're just focused on, on, focus on Cincinnati. Talking to Terry about the, they really, it's a bunch of Cincinnati Saints over there on defense. Uh, they get a lot of guys over there. Um, yeah, we talk all day, every day, and we got a great football staff. And uh, yeah, there's always familiarity. You know, we'll see Hayden, right? Um, yeah, all those guys, yeah. So, uh, you know, Steve Jackson, one of our offensive coaches, was over there last year on defense, and he's very familiar with them, too. mindset and aggressiveness or something that, that has been part of the reason why you guys are taking the ball away so often? Well, I think it's just guys 
playing really well within the scheme, and, you know, and a credit to a lot of our players. But you know, it was a lot of the plays that don't show up on, show up on the stat sheet. I thought uh, Epicady rushed really well. You know, making a guy move off the spot sometimes that makes him sail a throw. You're able to get the hands on the ball, or maybe ball gets tipped, and you know, Hawk, uh, you know, got the one interception. But those are the little things that I think are starting to add up that may not go down, like the pressure moving him off the spot and uh, not let him get set helps. I think Rashawn, uh, you know, at third and one, being in tune, being able to get the ball out. And then you know, obviously it takes a funny bounces, but guys running to the football, uh, you're rewarded for that as well. After week one, you, know, you said what you said after the Saints game, and you said it a couple times in the past about the expectations. Yeah, you're not going to get me to talk about that, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what I was going to ask was, do you have to talk to your team at all about the possibility of changing, of outside expectations changing through the course of the season and not paying attention to that based on the value? Yeah, season? I mean, it's the same thing. It's, it's like when – whether you win or lose, like it's it's all about being objective. Those peripheral opponents, the same thing. If they if you you get praised and you, you start believing that praise too much, shame on you. And the same thing about uh, whatever the negative opinions are. Um, and that's life. I mean, to, to be realistic, it's so it's all about perspective, and you can't let that affect you either way. You talk a lot about each week, obviously, just focus mm-hmm. on the next opponent. How do you figure out when you go into any given game? You know, the difference what you need to get better on the macro picture versus that given week gives opponent. I eat, for example, sacks, right? Like, so, right. you know, you haven't had a couple of sacks in the last two weeks. Obviously, it's an Oh, yeah, you know, we did. And then we got called back because yeah. of the whole. Well, yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, I guess the point, you know, you go against a team like Cincinnati, you can see the difference when Burrow has time versus when he doesn't have time. In the big picture, you want to get better there, but against a specific opponent, do you just scheme for that that week and not worry about the big picture? Yeah, a lot of it turns into matchups. I mean, that was the one thing about when you're going and playing Tampa, you knew the ball was coming out. And so, you know, and not, not everybody will play that efficient. Um, and then Jimmy, I think yesterday, he did a decent job extending plays. But a lot of those getting him off the spot, those pressures led to us well, getting off the field on third down. And so, yeah, you know, stats the – I mean, excuse me, if you get sacks, that's the pretty statistic that – and a lot of people get rewarded off off of it, and they can create a little bit of selfishness too. If that's what you're going to pay, you're just going to reward the sack number, and you're not going to consider the other 95% of the plays that are in there and the effect they're having. And that's why I think Zoe and Grady and TQ and those guys and AK are hitting our rush plan. And I think you, it'll pay off. Um, different obstacles every week, depending on their protection scheme, the time the guy spends in the pocket, how he moves with it. And uh, we'll have our challenge. I know what the, the numbers are, have, have been for Cincinnati, but they've been pretty damn good offensively, regardless of it. I think uh, there was a, something I saw the other day about Joe Burrow talking about uh, sacks can be mis- misleading on the other other side. So we know there's a challenge. Uh, this passing game is, is pretty damn good. Um, and so we got our work cut out for us. We're still early kind of come up with a plan. And does your um, – uh, we're starting to see a little, little, little movement in the, with the trade deadline coming up. Uh, what's your all's philosophy on the trade deadline, uh, you know, um, given, you know, where you're at at this point? I think everybody, you know, those guys talk all, all the time. You know, I think it's pretty common. Um, if the opportunity is right, great. It's like somebody gives you an offer you can't refuse. Get the old Don Coley on, you listen. But, uh, you know, so it just depends what, you know, situation shows up, D-Led. But those guys, uh, I think it's pretty standard operating procedure. Those GMs, they, they all call and check in no matter what. They're looking for uh, a deal to kind of. Sure, everybody's looking for a deal, whether it's for now, for short term or long term. And uh, again, the guys that are leaky, they leak them out to you guys for whatever incentive. And some of it's nonsense, some of it's real. <laughs> That's kind of my opinion on it. I think Troy Anderson's snap percentages have been increased all the way to the point where yesterday, obviously, he's filling in for Michael. He played 100% of the defensive snaps. How would you assess where? He is now versus where he was at the start of training camp as, as kind of a guy who's obviously kind of green and, and developing a position. Right. I mean, it's a hard transition to the NFL. These rookie seasons are long for, for all the guys, whether they're early pick or late pick and guys in there. And the same thing with Timmy Horn. You know, Timmy's playing in there and all the guys. Uh, Troy took a lot of snaps yesterday, but uh, we've got a good problem. And, you know, there's a place to, to play all our guys. Mike, when he comes back, and Sean's playing well. Troy's doing a really good job, too, on, on the special teams. I know we didn't end up, they ended up getting the touchdown off it, but that play he made on the the, punt, the one punt return where they, they spit out of there 
Uh, we missed a couple tackles. You got to see his speed. He can accelerate as well as anybody. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he has a huge impact on the game when he's out there, and, and we'll continue. It wasn't perfect, but uh, glad we have him, and, and it's fun working with him. Your IR guys, any of them, you guys just I don't have any update. We'll see. Hey, Coach, what did you see from Isaiah in his first game back, and how did his play have an impact on the defense's overall success yesterday? Yeah, uh, Isaiah is somebody that uh, he, that I got so much respect for. Um, you know, all these guys work hard, but, you know, I, there would be nights you see Isaiah here rehabbing, and it wasn't to be seen. I mean, it was just he was in here all the damn time. And he's such a smart, instinctive player. Um, it's hard not to have a soft spot for him, especially when he's coming off that. And it was good to have him back out there. And he made an impact. You feel him. He's a very smart football player. Obviously, he got the interception for the half. Uh, glad to have him back. Was when he got hurt there toward the end, was that as much? Yeah, is that a? It's a football game, Mike. Okay. I think he'll be all right. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if it was more like, yeah, just hadn't played in so long, whether it was. I'd have to talk to him about game. that to get the philosophical meaning behind him. Okay. Because stats can be misleading, you know, it seems like teams with good defensive stats will always be good situationally. Yes. In your case, your stats aren't like eye popping defensively, but you're very good situationally. Is that, in this case, more important to you than. It is. You know, that's the thing. I mean, like, you know, credit to San Fran. I mean, they held the ball for a while in the fourth quarter, but at the end of the day, those, are, those yards didn't matter. Right. You know, so whatever that fourth quarter statistic was about yards, and that goes, and that's why sometimes I think ranking. Defense is just on total yards is misleading. I think the Patriots have gone to the Super Bowl with the 31st ranked defense. But maybe because they had the lead so much and teams were getting the old check down, you know, QBR game for the quarterback. You know, you're, you're down four possessions and the guy, look at Stanley, like, wow, he threw for 300 yards. Like, yeah, well, 200 came when the game was out of reach. Congratulations, buddy. But, like, that's kind of how it feels. So that's where total yards can be misleading. It's going to come down to situational football. Third down, turnover margin, red zone, and uh, that's – the main focus. You'd love to have, you know, 12-3 and outs and likely that happen and not high, but we'll work for it.